Hello and welcome to lecture 55 of the course theory of computation. In this lecture we see yet another NP complete problem which is knapsack. Right? In the previous lectures we saw many other NP complete problems. So, we saw uh, problems which are based on Boolean formula like SAD, 3 SAD etc. We saw problems which are based on graphs, clique, independent set, vertex cover etc. Uh, we saw subset sum in the previous lecture which was asking given a set of numbers and a target sum is there a subset of that set which sums to the target sum. Right? So, all of these problems are NP complete and just to remind ourselves NP complete problems uh, are uh, considered to be the hardest problems in the class NP and it is widely believed that um, they do not have a P, uh, polynomial time algorithm right? because if we show that any NP complete problem has a polynomial time algorithm we would be proving that P equal to NP which is which has been a big open question that has been open for 50 years. right? So, it's, it's and it is widely expected or widely believed that P is not equal to NP and hence nobody or most people do not think that we will be able to provide uh, polynomial time algorithms for these NP complete problems. Right? So, this lecture uh, it is going to be a brief lecture we are going to see the another problem called knapsack as we will see there is uh, a, so we will see the problem first. So, there are n objects right. So, they are indexed 1, 2, 3 up to n and uh, 1, 2, 3 up to n. Each object has a weight w1 to wn. So, first object has weight w1, second has the weight w2 and so on and each object has a value v1, v2 up to vn right. So, there is a weight and a value. So, something like gold will be uh, very valuable for a small weight and but something like iron would be not so valuable for the same weight. right? So, so the setting is this that you are uh, you are a thief or a robber and uh, you are robbing some some place where you have a lot of assorted collection of objects and you you have brought a sack with yourself or, or that is what the knapsack indicates you have a sack or a bag with yourselves which can carry objects. right? But that has limited capacity there is only so much of items that you can put into your sack. So, as a thief or a robber you want to maximize the value of the items that you carry right only then can you sell them for maximum money for all the risk that the thief is taking. So, he he wants some payoff right. So, he wants to maximize the value. However, the bag is kind of uh, old or torn or whatever it and, and any bag has a physical uh, capacity right it, it, it will not be able to hold more than a certain possible certain capacity. So, it cannot hold items which are weight more than something. So, the goal of the of the person of the thief should be to pack as much items as possible such that the weight does not exceed the weight capacity and we want to maximize the value of the items in the bag right. So, this is the this is the requirement. So, now uh, we will we'll formulate this question as a, as a decision problem. So, there are I, n items 1 to n index 1 to n they each have a weight w1 to wn and each have a value v1 to vn. Now, given a, the capacity of the bag w like capital W and given a goal value g right. So, g means it is the goal that we are given. So, we have to uh, the, the robber has to bring at at least uh, g worth of of items right but his bag can only carry w kilogram of of items so the question is does there exist a subset of items whose whose weights whose sum of weights is below the capacity right that's what is indicated here sum of the weights is below the capacity whereas the sum of the values is exceeding the goal that we have so this is a natural thing that you one would want to do one would want to get items whose weights are below capacity, but the value is above the goal that we have. right? So, this is at most capacity w and value is at least the goal. right? So, that is the question and this happens to be NP complete. So, you may feel that this is like even subset sum we wanted to collect pick a subset of items or subset of numbers which sum to it which, which gave the sum to a target. Here, uh, it is similar here also we want a subset of items that that satisfies this as well as this right. So, 
in fact this problem also is NP complete. Uh, first of all, it is in NP by the same standard guess and verify approach. So, we can guess a subset, we can not deterministically pick or not pick each element and we get a subset and then we just verify the subset, verify if the subset uh, 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 satisfies these two constraints, the sum of weights being at most the capacity and sum of values being at least the goal. So, if, if it is a yes instance of knapsack, then one of these guesses will be, will be correct. And then to, 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 to show the NP completeness proof, we have to show that uh, uh, some NP complete language reduces to this problem. So, we will reduce subset sum to this problem, which is not surprising because subset sum seems similar in flavor, right. So, in subset sum also we had to collect, a, we had to, uh, uh, we had to choose a subset of items, right, subset of numbers and then it had to satisfy certain property. Here also we had to set, uh, pick a subset of some items, right. So, both are similar in flavor. Right? Uh, this is also something that is uh, usually a theme uh, when you want to show that a certain language is NP complete, we try to look for problems that are similar to this that are known to be NP complete. Usually these problems turn out to be easy to uh, get a reduction from. Right? So, since subset sum is similar in some sense, we are going to reduce from subset sum. So, what is subset sum? Given a set s let us say s 1 to s k like k numbers and a target sum t, we wanted to know whether there is a subset of the set capital S whose I element sum to the target sum. Right? Is there a subset of capital S, capital S such that the, the elements of that subset sum to t. Right? So, given this we will construct a knapsack instance. Right? So, knapsack we have we need n items where the sum and with weights and values specified such that the sum of the weights should be at most something, sum of the values should be at most something. So, to, to, to completely specify the subset sum uh, sorry knapsack instance, we need to tell what are the n items, what are their each of their weights, what are each of their values, what is the target or what is the weight capacity and what is the value goal. So, these 5 things need to be or these 4 things w 1 to w n, v 1 to v n, w and g capital W and capital G need to be specified to uh, provide the knapsack instance. So, let us see what is the knapsack instance going to be. So, we have k items so where k is the same as this k right this k we have k items and the weights are going to be s 1 to s k right. So, the, the whatever the numbers were in the subset sum instance, the weights are going to be the same s 1 to s k. The values are also going to be the same right and the capacity is going to be t which is a target sum right. Capacity is going to be t and the value goal is also going to be t right. So, it is a very simple reduction. Um, so, given the subset sum instance, um, we repeat the, 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 the numbers as the values and the weights and the target sum is repeated as the weight capacity as well as the value goal. So, both of them uh, it is the same instance repeating. So, virtually it takes just, just the time to write this down there is no calculations needed right. So, given the subset sum instance we can almost immediately write down the knapsack instance. Hence, this is a uh, so I am not bothering to explain much this is a uh, linear time reduction which is also polynomial time reduction right. Now, it is uh, even the correspondence is fairly straightforward. So, if this knapsack instance is a yes instance. So, now we have to show that the subset sum instance that is given here is a yes instance if and only if this knapsack sum sorry knapsack is a yes instance of the knapsack right. So, so, for a yes instance of knapsack what we have to satisfy? We have to check whether there is a subset right meaning a set i with indices uh, which is a subset of indices such that the sum of weights is at most the weight capacity. So, the weight capacity here is t the sum of weights is actually sum of s, s i that belong to i. So, is there a subset of the elements or is there a subset of the indices such that these for these indices the sum of s i is at most t. So, the weight 
weight capacity gives us this and the value capacity or the, the value goal is g so the value goal is g which is also t right which is t here but the values individual values are s1 to sk so if you if you sum the selected items right so the selected items which is the set i uh, the, the sum of the value should be at least the goal which is t so sum of the values should be at least t but what are the sum of the values the values are actually s1 to sk so that gives us that summation si of the selected items should be at least t so now we have two two inequalities one of them says sum of the si should be at most t and the other one says sum of the si should be at least t so combining so if the knapsack instance is a yes instance both of these must be satisfied so combining this if the knapsack instance is a yes instance we have this which is that uh, summation of the selected items or summation of the selected uh, si is equal to t right so a yes instance of knapsack we have this but this is exactly what happens in the yes instance of a subset, subset sum right this is a subset of the given set s right it's a subset of the given set s which sums to the target sum right so now it's very clear that a yes instance of a knapsack gives a yes instance of a of the subset sum and the yes instance of the subset sum also gives a yes instance of a knapsack right so the reverse direction is also easy it, it, it's pretty much the same argument in the opposite direction right so this means that uh, the correspondence is also proved a yes instance of knapsack implies a yes instance of subset sum and the, the other direction is also the same so this this shows that uh, we have a yes instance of the knapsack if and only if we have a yes instance of the sub subset sum and together this implies that the knapsack is knapsack problem is np complete and and that's it it's it's a rather uh, brief proof but that that's what that's all there is to it right so knapsack where there is a problem with weights values etc now uh, we just uh, we reduce subset sum to this by making the weights and values equal to the numbers in the subset sum and the weight capacity and value goal both equal to the target sum in the subset sum that that gives us that if the knapsack is a yes instance that gives us a subset whose sum is equal to the target sum right if the, so if if the if there is a subset with the target sum the same subset will satisfy uh, will be a sense of the knapsack also right it's fairly straightforward so that shows that uh, and and it takes polynomial time to write down this instance that shows that subset sum reduces to knapsack right and that completes the proof and subset sum is uh, sorry knapsack is np complete now one small thing i want to mention um, so there are two there are two parts in to sh in showing that uh, np completeness right so there are two parts in showing np completeness right so you want to show to show np completeness let's say np completeness of let's say c we need to show two things one is that c is in np two is that uh, for all a in np a reduces to c in polynomial time right and uh, this the second condition right the second condition right this condition this condition can be actually uh, this can be replaced this can be replaced replaced by b reduces to c in polynomial time where b is a b is an np complete problem so instead of showing that all the a in np reduces to c 
we just show that a selected NP complete problem reduces to C. In fact, that's the strategy that we, this is already something that we have already seen. So here we, we reduced subset sum, which is already shown to be NP complete to knapsack, right? So now this part, this, the part two alone is some usually referred to as NP hard. So, or NP hardness. So first, so to show NP completeness, uh, we need to show that C is in NP, which is condition one. And second is to show that C is NP hard. NP hard means all languages in NP reduced to C. Equivalently, some NP complete language reduces to C, right? So sometimes the second condition is referred to as the NP hardness, right? So just to, I, I just wanted to stress on this. So uh, this, is, this is, so some place where, uh, so NP hard is usually used in a, in a way similar to or synonymous with NP complete because usually the second, the, the first thing is usually easy to show that something is an NP. So the NP to show something is NP complete usually boils down to the proof of NP hardness because the part one is easy. Part two is the one that is, uh, that is the, the challenging one. So, but there are languages which are not in NP, but are NP hard because you could be something even more harder than NP, but all languages in NP can be reduced to this. So, uh, being NP hard does not imply that the language is in NP, right? Anyway, my point was to uh, uh, highlight this uh, terminology because as, as students of a uh, theory of computation course or when we are learning computational complexity, um, you may come, come across this term called NP hardness. So NP hardness means usually means this that all languages in NP reduce to that language, right? And uh, so to show something is NP complete, we need to show the membership in NP, which is condition one, and to show that this language is NP hard, which is condition two. Right? So these two together show that uh, a language is NP complete, right? So that's it as far as lecture number 55 is concerned. So we, we defined the knapsack problem, which is a decision problem, and we showed that it is NP complete by reducing it from subset sub and we had a brief discussion on NP hardness. And that completes lecture 55. Uh, in the next lecture, uh, lecture 56, we will see yet another NP complete problem. So see you in lecture 56. Uh, thank you.